Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to TerraTech with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to the second episode of the Still Unnamed series, in which we are going to be taking a look at the best, the most interesting, and most likely the most weird of all the techs currently on the Steam Workshop. And in today's video, we are now starting a new format. So I decided, after reading a lot of feedback, we are going to be doing this once a week, and we are going to be doing a mix of the best of the week as voted on Steam and also we are going to be taking a look at the most popular of all time and perhaps even trying to find some hidden gems which sadly just didn't get up there so any suggestions in the comments is very very welcome though if you are suggesting a tech please don't post a link because YouTube is really bad with Steam links but instead just put the username who created it and the name of the design on Steam and I will be taking a look hopefully we can find some amazing things which don't get the recognition they deserve. So with that, let's begin with a best of all time design. You are reading that correctly. This is indeed apparently a Star Destroyer. Now like always, I've not looked at this in the game yet, so I'm really, really interested to see what sort of scale this is on. Hopefully it won't break the game, is what I'm basically saying. And load tech, a little bit of lag there, and here we are, it is indeed a hovercraft. I was wondering, would it be a hovercraft or just a sort of drone style in terms of controls? Oh, I love how those guns have been done on the side. Okay, so by the looks of things, it is using the hover bug. Let's just confirm that left and right. Yeah, it definitely is. We are using rotors to turn. Fantastic. But seriously, I love how these little turrets have been done. A tiny little note on this huge thing. But seriously, how they've used the armor there looks really, really nice. So, absolutely loads of missiles. We have the venture cannons on the side. Yeah, that looks just phenomenal. Very, very impressive. Seeing this heading towards you, you would probably... Well, you would run. You would run very, very fast. And it probably wouldn't help in the slightest. So then, let's see. How does this thing actually move? So forwards is doing nothing, so I'm assuming it's going to use these thrusters. Okay then. That's a lot of force. Okay, I shouldn't have um, held that up then. Also, force, no pun intended. Yeah, okay, so when you're going to build beam, be careful because this thing's so heavy, it's going to sink a little bit afterwards, which makes complete sense. That hitbox is so wrong. Okay, yep, yeah, well, that's been utterly obliterated. It's a little bit heavy in the air, but to be fair, it is a Star Destroyer. I imagine these things wouldn't do amazingly with quick turns in the atmosphere anyway. Seriously, though, that is absolutely awesome. I wonder how much fuel this thing has. It has no fuel gauge. I'm going to use a fuel gauge. I want to see how long the fuel's going to last, because that's the only way to move forwards. So, I am very curious about that. Okay. Doesn't actually have too many thrusters. And with the size of this thing, it could probably hide a lot of thrust. A lot of fuel, rather. Turning now. Turning is very sluggish, but again, that's completely understandable. Not exactly points off there. If it turned too fast, I think it would actually take away from the look of the thing. So, I'm kind of happy about that, weirdly. I mean, it does turn. Can it move backwards? Ah, there's a problem. Not being able to move backwards at all will make this difficult to control in the actual game. Turning also seems to lower us slightly. As we did just bump into the ground, yeah, it does tilt us and slowly lower us, but the thrust will make us go upwards, so that's fine. Just need to make sure it's turn while moving. It's going to take a while to actually get to the target, but when it does, it's going to be devastated. Okay, so next thing I want to test out, let's give this thing some charge. So let's quickly just spawn in some solar panels and see how this thing deals with that. That's right, I just anchored a Star Destroyer. And the fact this design exists so that I can actually do that makes me very, very happy indeed. And don't worry, I will remove all of these as soon as it's fully charged. I don't think solar panels sticking out like that on a Star Destroyer would look very fitting.
This thing has so many shields. I have been sitting here for a full two minutes, and this is all we've got so far, and it's still going. It is, however, fully charged, so I don't think it has that much shield power. Well, battery power, I should say. But I guess we'll find out that once we get moving. Are we done? Okay, so only shields then for the core. And there's a lot of them. So, a little bit vulnerable, admittedly. So what I think we should do is slowly turn this way, because I just find this hilarious, an anchored Star Destroyer. And then we're going to destroy all of the enemies at the main area, the main training area. Now that is cool. Releasing it from the anchor and just allowing it to go straight forwards like that is quite an experience, actually. That is lovely. Okay, let's just turn so we don't crash. That's fine. Oh, do I have the build beam bug? It looks like I do, yeah. It's currently saying we are in the build beam, but don't worry, we are not, because we have these thrusters online, which simply don't work if you're in the build beam. I'm going the wrong way. In style. Will any of these enemies even have a chance to attack us? That's the question. Oh, there goes the first. No, the first is still safe. We are very high up right now. If you just hold down the thrust, you will gain some serious altitude, it seems. So that's kind of how you're going to control that. Yeah, there we go. All of them being destroyed in a straight line. Oh, cannons actually taking their first victim. Yeah, these enemies. Well, first of all, you can hardly see them. They're so far down. But also, they don't stand a chance. Just cruise missiles everywhere. And if you're unlucky enough to be well-timed and in the, the way of the cannon, well, your fate isn't much better. Probably actually worse. So if you just want something to go along destroying absolutely everything, I think the Star Destroyer probably has your number. Oh, this guy might survive. He did dodge the missile. No, no, it's dead. It's dead. I love the cannon shots on the side. Look at how they look because they're arcing because we're moving forwards. Oh, that cannon's locked on, so I was trying to fire forwards. That's a shame. Well, we missed the last two. If we were going a little bit slower and actually thinking about it, they would definitely die. So the only thing we have to do now is test this out in creative with enemies present. Then, we'll give it a bit of a rating, because some people do really want a rating system, and I kind of want it as well, but I think it needs to be adjustable, because some techs are going to be amazing in the test chamber, but not really work out in the game, either in creative or actual survival. So I think I'm going to give a 5 star rating for creative, survival, and... Well, here. Yes, Lathrix just forgot the name of the R&D test chamber right here. I'm also tempted to split that one into two. Just general functionality and then the style and the idea about it, because some things are going to hardly work, but are going to be so amazing, I don't really care. So, maybe not rating today. Tell me how you would rate it in the comments so I can rate it in the next video, which will likely be next week. Now we're in creative mode, and I've got to say, now we have a little bit of context of the size of this thing, it looks even more impressive. So really, we're not really caring about enemies here. We know this thing can kill enemies. It has long-range cannons, and it has cruise missiles. It's going to be able to take out pretty much anything you need to in the creative or survival modes. What I'm really interested in is how it's going to deal with terrain. And honestly, I think it's going to be fine. With this intentional nosing up there, and pitching up, I should say, nosing up, the thrusters always cause us to go up, and then as soon as we let go of them, we very, very slowly descend. There we are, our current altitude is now at 60 and so on, which won't hit the floor because of the hover plates, which means you basically have complete control of this thing's altitude, despite the fact it's essentially a hovercraft. 
So that should be absolutely fine. Now, I did allow enemies to spawn, but apparently we're just not allowed to see them right now. Hopefully soon we get to see an enemy. Ooh, there's a temple in the background. I think we should attack it. And then maybe ram it, because I kind of want to see what happens when this thing takes damage, because I can only imagine it's going to be spectacular. Take that, sun temple. And now a slight adjustment in our course, and... Dink. No damage, because he wasn't going fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hovers here showing that they can indeed function correctly, and we are now above the temple. Wow, look at that for a screenshot. If it wasn't for the Hawkeye repair bubble popping up every five seconds. Well, thanks for that game. I wasn't going to use that as a thumbnail or anything. I've just realised something. Similar to one of my recent builds, we have the minimap back to front. So at some point, this was being built one way, then it got swapped, so don't worry, the cab is facing the correct way, but the design isn't quite sure which way is forwards, and thus, well, we're always going backwards according to the minimap. And I just restarted the game because I wanted to ensure that enemies were allowed. They definitely are. So where are they? There they are. Hello. A few side missiles there getting the enemy, and down it goes. Or not. That's a hardy little enemy. And now it's dead. Okay. I didn't even notice those small side missiles. Where are they? Oh, it has some of the, li the little venture missiles. So little, I said little twice. So I think I've gave this thing enough time now. I have to say, this is really, really fun to use. Which I think is honestly the main criteria of any tech in the workshop. It looks phenomenal, so it's definitely getting the job done there. It's fully functional, if a little bit cumbersome to use. I probably would never use it in the survival mode, but as just a bit of fun and honestly just looking so fearsome, it definitely wins out there. So, as usual, the links for all the techs will be in the description. And now we move on to the next one. Oh, I love that with the shadow. Still not looking for thumbnails, totally. Next up, and possibly last up, we have the Stubborn from the Weekly Best. From the screenshot, it looks like this is going to be a really efficient design, actually for survival mode. And, yeah. Also, by survival, I do mean campaign. I will be using both words there, because honestly, both of them apply. That looks way better than the screenshots, I've got to say. Now, the screenshots look good, but, but the shields just make it all look very one-dimensional, I want to say. It kind of makes everything look the same. And because of that, actually seeing it without the shields looks far better, and it looks really good. So just how many weapons does this thing have? It has four of the autocannons. It has, oh, it has missiles on the side. These are the Venture Avalanche launchers. Do those actually work? They do. I thought that gets stuck by the wheel. Apparently not. So well done there, using weapons in a very creative way. We have four of the large cannons at the top. We have mortars, more mortars, Zeus cannons. We have the battleship cannons. And we have five, ten, fifteen cruise missiles. And I'm probably missing something. And loads of jets again. Okay, first of all, how's movement? Bit slow, but that's to be expected by these wheels. Uh, struggles to turn when still, but turning is fantastic when moving. That's fine by me. No problems there. Speed with thrusters is 65, 67. Will it hit 70? No, 68 seems to be the limit, but again, that's pretty fast considering how big this thing is. Lots of fuel as well. The fuel is only now going down. So you can pretty much have the thrusters on constantly. Good to know. Yeah, that's an absolute joy to use. In terms of controls, that is fantastic. Hello there. Well, it broke through that. Lots of burst damage. Need to be a bit closer though for those side weapons. There we go. Nice damage. Very nice damage indeed. First impressions, this thing is fantastic. 
Now, those side missiles didn't seem to work when we were facing off against an enemy directly in front of us. Let's see if that is the case. Now, I've noticed that. Is it purely for broadside? Yeah, it is. They don't even fire because they're facing forwards. But if we turn like this, I imagine... Yep, if you want to use the side missiles, you can. Just make sure to broadside the enemy. Love the design so far. Okay, let's get this thing shielded up. Let's see its shield coverage. This took a very, very long time to charge. Okay, let's get moving, finally. This thing has a lot of batteries. So, versus enemies. Let's see how well our battery power holds up. Couldn't really do this for the Star Destroyer because, well, it would have just been really, really difficult to hold it in position. Shields at the front have a lot of distance, which means enemy explosives are just not hitting us. Missiles probably will still, since it's not completely as far forwards as possible, but yeah, anything aside from that is going to be just fine. Oh, that missile volley is deadly. Yeah, that is absolutely insanely brutal. And if some of the side missiles fire before we target, they will all target at once and then absolutely obliterate the enemy. Oh, missiles, yeah, the missile's doing some damage, but not all that much. Easy. So from that, all I can say is this thing is an absolute brute. And will most likely defeat any tech which spawns in survival. So the only question is, how well does it handle terrain? If it can handle terrain, then this thing is going to be fantastic for survival. It's just fun to use, so it's going to get probably five stars for everything. Once I actually come up with a fair writing system. Either way... The Lathric Stamp of Approval, which means very little considering my building skill, but, you know, it's something. Thank you, Charger Boys. Let's get moving. Also, no lag being generated by this creation, which I don't know if I should write anything on that. The problem is different systems handle Terratech very, very differently, so people's overall mileage may very much differ. So I don't think I will be mentioning lag in any writing system, but just for my personal um, experience right now, none. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, yeah, so it handles mild terrain with absolutely no issue. In fact, it looks really nice. The creator of this definitely knew what they were doing. I will say that much already. So praise there. Oh, and we managed to dodge. Yeah, when it's moving, it's actually not nimble. But it's not far off either, it's not difficult to control. It just doesn't like turning when stationary, that's all. Goodbye to you, and so we continue. Okay, how about here then? Let's try to get to the end of this desert without taking any damage. Yep. Absolutely fine. No issues whatsoever. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get to the end of the desert with no problems. With this much thrust, there's a chance we can actually deal with even more severe terrain. I will go and find a good example of that in a second. But yeah, there we go. I couldn't see any damage taken. If there was, it must have been very minor. Crystal, get out of the way. Hello, enemy. Come on, let's get up here. No, not quite. So that is the limit. A little bit of a weakness against enemies directly behind us. Though, to be fair, that's more my fault for trying to climb this, which is, well... There's stress testing, then there's unfair testing. And I think that's definitely um, crossing that line. Though that is the very first hill I've not been able to fully climb, so yeah. This thing is fine on almost all terrain, which you'd expect it to be. Just don't try and climb something which is almost vertical.
Also, I don't think there is a weakness behind us, actually. Now I think about it, these cannons can definitely turn around. So can these. Probably just because we were in such a bad position then. Climb this? Yeah, no problem. How about up there? I feel like this might be a bit of a struggle. If you can make this, I'll be very proud. I am very proud. So what is my overall opinion then of this craft? Honestly, I can't fault it. I have to say, I cannot think of a true negative thing to say. The only thing that comes close is that this will be very, very, very expensive when it comes to the survival mode, the campaign mode, but that really isn't a major criticism in the slightest. It handles well, it has great shield and repair bubble coverage, it has some seriously heavy weaponry, it's really fun to use, which again is a huge plus, it looks good and it's even armored i mean i just can't think of anything which is a real down point on this thing for just fun or going into the campaign this definitely is a contender for one of the best techs i've ever seen that's how good i think this is and once again it looks really cool i mean look it can destroy nature from all sides what's not to love but with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. I do want to keep these videos 20 minutes or less, or at least around 20 minutes long. I don't want to have 30 minute episodes like the first one every single time, as I feel that's going to drag and take away from the designs I'm showing. I don't want to have to limit myself time-wise per design so that I don't end up going like 30 40 minutes so here we are just two designs today and i will be back next week please give me any feedback you have about this series i'm having a lot of fun and i'm being absolutely blown away by the sheer creativity of people on the steam workshop so thank you so much for watching and if you have enjoyed the video then of course likes favorite shares comments all that good stuff helps out me helps out the channel and most importantly shows that terror tech is a series you wish to see continued in the future Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. Links are in the description.